Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us today for our presentation from FreeWave. Uh, I'm going to pass things over to my colleague, Tom Fierce, and he's going to do a quick introduction to Alliance. Um, just one a uh, couple of housekeeping notes. I am recording this, so if you do have to drop off, don't worry. Uh, after the webinar, you'll receive a, a link to a recording of the entire presentation. Um, and uh, afterwards, I will send that email. So if you do want a copy of the actual presentation, just send me a note. Um, and uh, the third point is questions. We can take questions throughout the webinar, um, but we will probably address them at the end. So if you have anything, just send it whenever you think of it. And then at the end, or if uh, during the presentation it seems appropriate, we'll, we'll take it then. So um, I'm going to hand things over to Tom. And um, I hope you enjoy the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Tom Ferris, um, Director of USA Broadband for Alliance Communications, coming to you from sunny New Jersey. we got a real hot one here today. So I uh, uh, hope you all enjoy the summer. appreciate you coming on board, taking a little bit out of your, uh, your day here to uh, hopefully learn about um, some interesting new topics that are, uh, that are coming our way lately in the industry and to meet one of our uh, premier partners, a company by the name of Freeway. I don't know if you're all familiar with them, but after today, you certainly will be. So what we're going to be talking about today, um, <clears throat> we call this free-flowing. So um, future-proof for fog computing, which is kind of a new term that you're going to hear, uh, from machine to machine and the industrial Internet of Things. Um, what we're basically looking at these days is we're looking at a, uh, a lot more networkable devices, whether they be um, uh, simple devices like on and off devices for meters or uh, flow meters or for valves, or if they're more sophisticated uh, devices out at the edge of the networks to perform a number of tasks, say at a, a remote wellhead or at a remote drill site or whatnot. Um, so what we're going to take you through today is a couple of, uh, we're not only going to take you through the products that FreeWave offers, but we're going to take you through some um, pertinent scenarios where uh, we think these products work very well, and uh, hopefully these are scenarios that you guys are coming up against out there where we could be of assistance, all right? So what's exciting about today's presentation? Well, today's forecast is foggy on the ground, clouds above, but don't worry, all is well. Uh, fog is kind of a new term you're going to hear out there. You know, we all know what the cloud is, but uh, there's a new term out there that I think Cisco has been bantering about quite a bit lately, and it's the fog. Basically, it's everything that happens on the ground out at the edge of the network. Um, as devices become more numerous, as devices become a little bit more sophisticated, way out at the edge of the network, it's, a, it's, it's not only important to connect these devices, but it's also sometimes important to put a little bit more computing power out at the edge um, so that we can do things remotely, that we don't have to do everything back into the core or the cloud of the network. So um, you know how we go through these you know, five-year technology trends where things come into the core and then they go back out to the edge and then they come back to the core. Well, we're kind of heading back out to the edge of the network right now. And what you'll find today is we're going to put some interesting uh, case studies in front of you as to how products from Freeway are going to be able to precipitate building this fog out there on the edge of the network. All right? Um, just a little bit about Alliance. We are a wireless and wireline telecommunications distribution company. Uh, we span several, uh, we span all of North America and South America. Uh, we provide a variety of different products, um, wireless products, uh, fiber products, IDAS and ODAS, uh, cellular products, as well as all the infrastructure products you need to do any type of cellular or broadband installation. And this has anything to do with mounting equipment in, in outdoors, in shelters, towers, or on rooftops. And then in the middle, we do a lot of supply chain services. So if you're a utility out there and you're doing a large-scale, multi-year rollout of new technology and you need a facility to provide in and outbound logistics so you have all the material you need when you need it, we do that kind of thing right now for the cellular providers. So that's right there in the middle. To get a little bit more specific, as I said earlier, we're leading supplier of infrastructure solutions. So we have a world-class assortment. You're going to recognize a lot of the names and logos that I'm going to put up in a minute of the different products and manufacturers that we represent. Oh, we have an extensive inventory in all of our facilities throughout the United States, Canada, and Latin America. 
Uh, everybody at Alliance has been doing this for quite a while. So you're not going to talk to some telemarketing person who uh, who has to uh, make a phone call to go check for an answer. The people you get, you're going to talk to here at Alliance are knowledgeable, they're experienced. They're going to actually help you craft the solutions and, uh, and be, like I said, an independent recommender of a variety of different technologies that we have at our disposal to put out into your network. We also provide pre and post sales technical support as well as on-site or off-site training for most of our products. We have, in, we have in, inside engineers who are uh, either certified in the products themselves or certified as train the trainers so we can dispatch these folks out to our customer or partner sites. And as I said earlier, we have warehouses throughout the Americas. On the technical services side of things, we do a lot of microwave radios here, so we do a lot of backhaul. So we do path licensing in both Canada and the United States. We also provide network design services, and these are generally free of charge to our uh, our customers and our partners. But we can do your net, your microwave um, network design. We can do your radio path surveys and software. We can also pre-configure products in our in our warehouse facilities before they go out to your site. So if products need to be upgraded regarding firmware or if any special software keys need to be loaded on the radios before they go out, or you want us to flash just a, a, a special type of, uh, of configuration for the radios, we can do that in our site before we ship them out to you. But basically, you can just grab and go and get your tech and get your installations done. We do kitting, interacting, and stacking as well. So we have the ability to integrate products and also kit uh, entire sites, whether they be tower sites, rooftop sites, uh, or any other type of gas sites. We do tower design as well. We represent several tower manufacturers, and we assist in the, uh, the unsigned paperwork or the unsigned engineering documents for tower designs. And then, as I said earlier, we provide Tier 1 and 2 technical support and also RMA support for a lot of our vendors. Uh, so we have a comprehensive best-in-class uh, broadband solution here. You'll see, um, you know, for some of the wireless folks in the industry, I'm hoping these are kind of household names for you. These are some of the best products in the business out there. Um, uh, this is an older slide. We just brought our friends from Freewave on, and, and, I, and, and, and I apologize for not having them on there, but I'll add them to the next show. But if you see on the left side, these are all the different types of radio systems that we currently sell, backhaul and transport, point-to-point, -point, point to multi point license and unlicensed, mesh outdoor, Wi-Fi, LTE, WiMAX towers, ACDC, UPS products, cabinets, shelters, anything that might go into an integration uh, process. So as I said earlier, Alliance is a full service wireless and wireline telecommunications distributor. We look forward to working with you on any upcoming free wave um, uh, projects, and uh, my sales reps and I look forward to talking to you all in the future. Um, as Lisa said earlier, we're taping these um, presentations, so we're going to post them up on our Facebook site, uh, excuse me, on our YouTube channel later today. We also have a Facebook site and a LinkedIn site, so if you want to go up and check us out, please feel free, and Lisa does a bit of tweeting from time to time, not as much as Trump, but uh, um, she gets the word out there about some of our key partners. All right, and with that, I'd like to turn it over to Greg Corey of Freewise. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. You're welcome. Okay, great. Uh, can everybody see the screen here? Looks good. Thanks. Okay. Uh, I want to thank uh, Alliance for having us today. Uh, my name is Greg Corey, and I'm a systems engineer with Freeway Technologies. And today uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about FreeWave as a company, uh, uh, some of our product portfolio, and then also some real-world scenarios uh, that FreeWave can offer solutions for. So we're going to start off with just talking about a little bit about FreeWave and, and what we do as a company. Uh, FreeWave has been around for over 20 years now. Uh, traditionally, we're a hardware company in that we manufacture wireless devices that uh, can bridge fairly long distances um, in outdoor applications. So we are a uh, wireless replacement for Ethernet, for serial, for digital and analog signaling. Uh, Freeway bridges the gap uh, between devices in the field. 
Uh, Freewave was an early leader in uh, what we now commonly refer to as M2M, or machine to machine. Um, in that, Freewave uh, has always been about exchanging data between devices. So when we talk about communications, you know, there's voice companies, there's video companies, and Freewave really made its mark as a data transmission company between devices. Um, so our background is hardware, and that's what we focused on uh, for the past 20 years. Uh, as of the last few years here, uh, we're starting to leverage software a lot more for the, the term that you heard earlier in the webinar, uh, FOD computing, and that's all about adding intelligence at the edge. Uh, in a lot of traditional machine-to-machine -machine networks, uh, you know, all the decisions are made at a central collection point and then it pushes it all out to the nodes. Um, as we get into more complex applications and more devices are becoming networked, there's a greater need for intelligence at the edge, and uh, FreeWave is hoping to add a lot of value to that in the near future here. So a little bit about uh, FreeWave as a company. Uh, as I said, you know, we've been around for over 20 years now. Uh, we're a leader in the machine-to-machine uh, -machine space. So bridging that wireless gap between devices. We're owned by one of the largest private equity companies in the US. Uh, currently, we have over a million radios deployed across many different vertical industries. Um, our two biggest verticals are gonna be government defense and oil and gas. Um, but we also do a lot of work with many different process-related industries, uh, electric power, water, wastewater, precision agriculture, so uh, we're pretty well diversified in what we, we can cover. Um, it's all about adding that intelligence and that connectivity for uh, devices, whether they be five feet away or, you know, five miles away. Uh, the top 30 North American oil companies depend on Freewave, as, as I said, one of our largest markets there, and Freewave is used in a lot of mission-critical applications where uh, you know, in a, a matter of a second, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars are at stake. Um, there's a lot of, of safety riding on our radios, and, you know, we're really proud of the reputation we have. Uh, as I mentioned here, uh, here's some of our uh, markets that we're a leader in wireless communications for. Uh, so there's the, the top three oil and gas, precision ag, and military government defense, where we specialize uh, in a lot of uh, unmanned uh, UAVs. Uh, one thing I haven't mentioned yet is uh, irrigation. Uh, so if you've ever been uh, in an airplane and you see the center pivots on the ground in a field, you see a circle there. Uh, for agriculture there, there's a lot of free wave radios on those systems. General environmental monitoring stuff, um, you know, measuring the movements of glaciers, of river flows, of things like that. So we're partnered with a lot of universities, uh, smart grid, utilities, uh, we do some stuff in mining as well, and uh, pretty much anything where you would need to measure a process, record data about the process, and also make decisions uh, based upon that data, uh, those are all, you know, very good fits uh, for freeway radios. Here's a kind of smattering of our customer list here, so some really um, prominent uh, institutions uh, trust our reputation and trust our hardware. Um, so there's just kind of an example of uh, some of our partners, and this is across many different industries. Taking a high-level look at some of the network uh, areas that we have expertise in. So one thing that makes FreeWave really unique is we have a lot of experience in being the closest to the sensor. Uh, so for Wi-Fi or for backhaul companies, uh, that's a very crowded market space. Uh, there's many different players there. Um, as you get further out into the network where the access layer is and you actually have wireless devices connected to the sensors, um, that's where FreeWave really shines and that's where we've spent you know, over 20 years of our existence and working at the edges of the network and those are the areas that we're going to introduce the FOD computing by uh, adding intelligence and, and other capability at the edge. So the access layer there, uh, as I mentioned, that is out in the field. That is your, your furthest, hard to get to devices. And those types of applications uh, vary depending on the throughput required, uh, the distance, the type of data interface. 
FreeWave has a really comprehensive product portfolio. We pretty much have a, a solution for, for any device that you may have out in the field in any industry in any location. Moving on to the aggregation layer here, uh, this is where we kind of take that concentrated uh, field data, and this is where a lot of our uh, security features uh, come into play, and we you know, kind of act as a, as a bigger pipeline uh, for the data that's coming in from the access layer. Moving on to the distribution layer, uh, this is where we have uh, some Wi-Fi based products, and this is uh, moving uh, very large amounts of data uh, over shorter distances or, or to the cloud or over cellular. We pretty much uh, have an application in each of those realms. Uh, as we move even further there, going to the core uh, data center, you know, that can allow remote access to all the way out to the, the access layer in something we call sensor to server. So FreeWave has a path of connectivity of hardware and software from your core data centers in the cloud all the way out to the edge of the field there. And uh, that's something we call sensor to server. Here is um, an example of some of our product portfolios. So we have many, as I was saying, many different radios for many different applications. Um, the Zoomlink family, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, that is our latest uh, high throughput 900 megahertz radio. Uh, that is also is a software development platform. Um, and that's going to add uh, a lot of intelligence to traditionally, we'll say, uh, dumb networks that kind of just act as a passage for data. Now at the edge, we can interact with that data, make decisions based on it, and some other things. The Zoomlink family is part of our general Ethernet offering. Um, so as the world more moves more towards uh, Ethernet for field devices, we have standards-based products like WavePro. Uh, that's 802.11 based. And with that, we can do you know, short-range Wi-Fi access for client devices in the field. Uh, we can do long haul as well. And uh, that's just a, a real great complement to our other type of technology. So one of the differences between the WavePro Wi-Fi family in the ZoomLink family is that the ZoomLink wireless protocol is proprietary, uh, where the WavePro is an 802.11 standards base. And you know, whenever we hear the word proprietary, it does have a negative connotation, but it's uh, a type of technology we've developed for something that wasn't being fulfilled uh, by traditional standards-based devices. And then it allows you know, very long distances uh, with you know moderate to large amounts of data to be transferred. So it's just a different tool for a, for a different type of job. Uh, moving on to the right here, we also uh, offer many different serial radios, and that's where FreeWave really made its mark about 20 years ago, and what made us famous as a company in the M2M realm. Uh, so serial products, that's where you need to interface devices that are RS-232 or RS-485. And... Uh, to a lot of us, uh, especially millennials, uh, when we look at you know serial products, and we say, "Wow, you know that looks, that's a really old technology." But the the process or the in industrial space moves a lot slower than the consumer space does. So there are still a lot of serial devices out in the field, and there still will be uh, for some time. And uh, serial works great. Uh, for still many new applications where Ethernet isn't required and it's just a lot simpler and sometimes there's a cost advantage. So even though we look at serial as, as something that's being eclipsed uh, by Ethernet communications, um, it's still a, a viable product for us and there's a lot of devices out there and there will be for some time. Moving on to the right there, our uh, licensed product family. So FreeWave uh, over the years has specialized in unlicensed bands, so 900 megahertz and 2.4 uh, primarily. We also offer licensed bands, uh, so most commonly that's going to be in the 455 range, and a, a licensed band there is going to give you much better range than our 900 megahertz product would, but as with everything in life, it's a series of trade-offs, and uh, generally the, the trade-off with wireless technology is you can go fast or you can go far. Um, so due to the laws of physics and due to regulations, it's 
very difficult to do both. Usually it's fast or far. Uh, when you have a license system, it's going to be much slower because of this, the spectrum is pretty finite that you're working with, um, but it's going to give you, uh, you know, much greater distance. Moving on to the middle categories here, these are our I.O. product categories or input-output, if you're not familiar with that term. So these uh, radios, wireless products, are for devices that don't have traditional Ethernet or serial ports. Uh, maybe it's a 4 to 20 milliamp uh, sensor. Maybe it's a switch. You know, maybe it's a relay. Maybe it's something you want to see if it's on or off, or maybe you want to turn something on or off, or maybe you want to open a valve, you know, to 35% or, or something like that. That's where I.O. comes in. And we have really two categories for uh, I.O. So we have C1 and D2, which is class one, division two. Uh, so those of you that might not be familiar with this type of classification, uh, in oil and gas environments where there could be hazardous vapors that could be ignited, uh, you don't want electronics uh, in those areas that could cause a spark and possibly an explosion. Uh, so we have two categories of products. So C1, D2 is safe for most oil and gas environments. When we move to uh, C1D1, uh, that is the uh, highest level of classification for uh, hazardous environments where uh, fumes could be ignited there. And something that's intrinsically safe means that it cannot cause a spark that uh, could ignite something there. So the actual electronics are designed that they are incapable of producing a spark that could ignite a hazardous environment there. So uh, we cover, you know, all environments, uh, you know, hazardous and non-hazardous. Uh, moving on to the bottom here is our OEM products. So we do have form factors for our hardware where you could mount it in a panel on a DIN rail mount just like any other device. But we also partner with companies and embed our, uh, our products um, within other products by manufacturers there. And uh, that's where we do a lot of our uh, defense work. So major defense contractors integrate our radio modules into their products. Uh, with the newer Zoom Link uh, 900 megahertz Ethernet product that I spoke about, there's an OEM version of that. And uh, we do have full uh, integration support available for that. So uh, I've been talking quite a bit about hardware uh, since I, we started the presentation here. Uh, so. Uh, on the software side, and we'll get to that in just a moment, we have a, a full software suite that supports almost uh, every piece of hardware we offer for configuration, storing of, of networks, uh, performing diagnostics, and things like that. Uh, so there is, again, even though we're traditionally a hardware company, uh, you know, software is very important. And if you talk to anybody in Silicon Valley, you know, they'll, Silicon Valley, they'll tell you that Software is king, and that's really where the future is. And uh, that's kind of where we pointed our, our Zoom link in terms of uh, where we want to go with that product. Uh, here we're looking at some available frequencies. So 450, 900, 1.4, 2.4. So this is kind of just a, a basic wireless propagation slide. So again, the lower you go in frequency, the further you're going to be able to travel. Uh, where higher frequencies bounce easier uh, if you have a really crowded uh, signal path, like in a building for 2.4 for Wi-Fi. And the actual size of the wave is larger uh, when you go in lower frequencies, so it carries a little bit better. Okay, moving on to uh, some of the products I want to focus on. Uh, so on the left there, that is the new Zoom Link platform which uh, personally I'm, I'm probably most excited about that because of its software uh, capability. In the middle, we have our WavePro. That's our standards-based product. So ZoomLink is a proprietary uh, product. And uh, we do have a roadmap item in the future that we probably will open up our wireless protocol uh, in the future for integration with other companies. But for now, it's something uh, specific to FreeWave. WavePro is uh, an 802.11 standards device. And that's used for, you know, client applications for Wi-Fi and uh, applications where much greater throughput is needed. 
where uh, Zoom Link is a longer distance, but a more moderate throughput device. So uh, it's rated at four megabits uh, on the Zoom Link for throughput. But uh, you know that all varies depending on the, the noise floor of the environment and also your application. There's some overhead involved. So uh, I'll say you know roughly you can see you know uh, a megabit to two megabits of actual TCP throughput uh, on the Zoom Link there. And you know that covers easily in the miles range, you know five ten miles. Uh, in the center there with WavePro, uh, shorter distances or we'll say distances that require a much more clear line of sight. That's 802.11 base and offer a lot more throughput, you know, into the the hundred megabit plus range. On the right hand side there, uh, that's one of our C1 D1 offerings for uh, I/O. And we'll talk a little bit, that's called Wave Contact, and we'll cover that in detail in just a second here. Looking into our uh, 900 megahertz radio portfolio, here is uh, an offering uh, of uh, four different radios of ours. So the FGR2C, uh, that's a serial radio, and it gives you some of the ideas of what you can cover, how much data you can move, and, and what range you're looking at there. Um, whenever you look at range, as we all know, uh, with wireless products, it really depends on you know the signal path, the antenna, um, things like that. It's you know you can look at a spec sheet for wireless products, and it's always going to be the biggest and best number that a manufacturer could come up with. But you know real world results may vary though. But uh, on the FGR two C, I see that very commonly used in the the two mile to ten mile range. Um, moving on to the FGR two P, so that's a, an Ethernet version of that serial radio, and yeah, generally you know two to ten miles um, for you know use in a lot of SCADA applications where we're measuring flow, we're looking at you know the level on something, um, we're, we're controlling basic inputs and outputs. Um, that Ethernet radio will, will bridge that type of communication if you have a controller out in the field there. The HT Plus, or known as the HT-P, uh, that's a higher throughput radio. Uh, so if you look at the speeds there, it's, it's much faster than the FGR 2-P, uh, but the range is going to be less. And, and again, that's the trade-off. You can go faster or you can go far. One thing I want to mention about the FGR2C, the FGR2-P, and the HT-P is that uh, the way to conceptualize these products is they are a replacement for physical cable. So you put a cable on one side, you know, plug it into a radio, and then over some distance you have another radio, and then the output to that. So it really is just a wireless replacement for physical cable, just in and out, you know, depending on if you're using serial or Ethernet. When we get to the last slide here, the ZoomLink radio, uh, this is Freeway's latest product. And this radio is essentially an industrial computer. So it's a, uh, a Linux-based device that it does function as a radio, but it's a lot more than you know just putting data in and out of it over distances. Um, when you have a modern operating system uh, on there, we use Debian Linux there. That provides a platform for uh, software development, for integration with other systems. Uh, so just a lot more capability, and that's where that term five computing comes into our product portfolio in that we essentially have a radio that is a hardened industrial computer that allows you to do a lot more than just pass data. And again, the, you can go fast or you can go far, so that's rated up to four megabits over the air on the zoom link and uh, that is adjustable so you don't have to run at the highest rate if you want to um, you can use a lower data rate and achieve greater distances so again you can make the choice if you want to go fast or you want to go far there um, it does have serial connections as well and actually all of our ethernet products do even even though it's natively ethernet we, uh, we offer a uh, serial port on there to function as a serial server. A lot of you are probably familiar with Lantronics, Moxa, or Digi serial servers. Um, on the Zoom link there, it's 
you know, it's a, a serial server, it's a radio, and then it's also, we'll say, an industrial internet of things um, application server. So uh, over the past couple of years, the, these terms have come into play. So M2M uh, is machine to machine, and that, that's what FreeWave has been doing from the beginning. Um, as we move on, you know, in the world, and a lot of things become Ethernet enabled, uh, that's known as the Internet of Things or IoT. And uh, you know, the product offering for that in the consumer space is probably growing the fastest. So if you want a light bulb, you know, then you can turn on and off remotely through Wi-Fi. Uh, some of you may be familiar with the Nest uh, product for home monitoring, and so lots going on in the consumer space with IoT. In the industrial space, which I, I talk about is typically slower to catch up the technology than the, than the consumer space is, uh, that's known as IIoT, or the Industrial Internet of Things. And it's a, it's a little different, um, but also kind of similar. You know, we're, we're getting data, we're remotely controlling things, um, but it's more for a hardened industrial environment than a living room. Let's focus on uh, the Zoom Link radio here for this uh, portion of the discussion. So currently we have one of the industry's uh, highest real throughput. So again, you know, in talking about speeds and feeds for wireless products, um, you know, any, anybody will, will put the biggest number they can for any specification they have on their product. But we've done some real world uh, competitive testing versus other vendors with our hardware. And when you actually measure the TCP throughput uh, going through the radio. We were highest in class for that. So that's something uh, we're very proud of. The features on this is it's a peer-to-peer uh, -peer radio. So it is, it is point to multipoint. You can have one talking to another point to point, or you can have one radio talking to many, many radios and point to multipoint. Um, you can also have a mesh network and peer-to-peer. So when a radio broadcasts data, any radio that's within range can also pick up that data and uh, do something with it. Uh, full security features, you know, AES 256-bit encryption. It uh, can be integrated with older free wave networks there. Low power consumption. And some of the things that free wave has been working on, you know, specifically that's new to the market, uh, is on the right-hand side here. So how to learn from the spectrum, uh, you know, where there's noisy parts and how to avoid those when we're trying to transmit, forward error correction, packet compression, packet aggregation. So as we get further and further out into the edge or into the fog, we'll say there, um, sometimes, uh, you know, the communication link is less than ideal. Maybe it's over a great distance. Uh, maybe there's a lot of obstacles in the signal path. Um, when you come, up, come to face challenges like that, you really need every bit of throughput that you can get there. So with the forward error correction and the packet compression, we can actually save throughput on the radio there, making the link more reliable. And uh, Zoom Link, again, is you know the, the key part of this product is it is a it's an, it's an internet or industrial internet of things uh, application appliance really uh, in that you know it's a radio um, it's a, a serial interface it's a serial server and it's it's a mini computer with a, with a Linux operating system on it and uh, there are currently kind of two uh, methods or we'll say you know processes you can use for developing software. So you can use a traditional model of software development and you know hire somebody that uh, can write code in C++, JavaScript, Python, anything like that. And then uh, we're also going down a second path for software development. Uh, over the past couple years, there's been uh, a surge in graphical uh, development environments for people maybe that know a little bit of programming but don't have, you know, are not specifically a software developer. And two of the paths that FreeWave is looking down for that are uh, an application called Node-RED. And 
Node-RED is a graphical programming environment uh, for JavaScript. And uh, I'm a technical person, but admittedly I'm not a software developer. And I've been using Node-RED a lot recently. And somebody with, uh, that you know, knows just enough to be dangerous but might not be a software developer, I've been able to write applications. Uh, so currently, actually, I'm one of my demo units. Um, I'm uh, recording some pressure sensors, storing it in a database. I have email alerts based upon what the values are. If they're over 3,000 pounds, you know, the Zoom link will send an email alert. Um, I have that data uh, viewable in a web interface uh, that's on there. I have logic built into it. You know, if this level equals this, then turn this off uh, so there, it can actually make decisions as well. Uh, it can be integrated with MQTT, uh, with the SMMT. Uh, so it's really it's communication, it's concentration of data, and it's control. Um, and I'm able to do that in writing a flow-based application uh, with Node-RED, not having a lot of software experience. So if you haven't heard of Node-RED, I uh, highly encourage you to uh, take a look at that, just Google it, and uh, you'll see what it's all about. Uh, so the second part of that path for, we'll say, you know, non-software uh, developers is also something called Open PLC. So uh, most of you are going to be familiar with what a programmable logic controller is. Uh, PLCs have been around probably for 50 years or so, and they've always involved um, using a specific piece of hardware to accomplish a task. And with OpenPLC, it's uh, an open source uh, software platform that we just became a major sponsor of. So OpenPLC will run on a ZoomLink radio, and it allows you to write uh, ladder logic-like statements uh, in order to control devices. So uh, one way I like to look at this is, uh, if you think in the consumer space uh, 10 years ago, where we had you know, a GPS navigation device in our car, when we're out for a jog, you know, we had an MP3 player. Uh, if you wanted to read stuff, you had a, an e-reader. Um, for taking pictures, you had a digital camera. Right? You had all these different hardware devices to perform very specific tasks. Now, you know, look where we are currently with technology in that a smartphone handles all of those things, right? People use their smartphone now as a navigation device. It's a media player. It's pretty much the, the only camera most people have now. Um, and that's all because of, of software in that the hardware has become so powerful and so cheap that we just need to write software to be able to accomplish these tasks. So FreeWave is, is really looking forward to bringing that type of change to the industrial or the process-related space in that you, know, you don't need a specific piece of hardware to accomplish every task. Your communication device, which you're going to have out there anyways, you know, the ZoomLink radio, can handle a lot of those tasks all on one unit. So we're really developing the platform. The way to think of it is it's, it's going to be the smartphone of the industrial environment and that it's as powerful as the software that runs on top of it. And uh, I spoke a lot, but that just kind of continues uh, into this next slide. So uh, IPR, uh, so that's programmability. And programmability is FreeWave's term for software development or you know, application hosting. So again, as I mentioned, uh, Node-RED, uh, that it's uh, it's, it's amazing. Check it out if you haven't heard of it. Um, and then we also, you know, support traditional languages there. Anything that you can run on Linux, you can run on the ZoomLink radio there. Uh, so some of the specs of that is we got one gig uh, of flash storage, and we got 512 meg of RAM currently. And uh, that works well for all the applications that I have uh, been working on so far. Occasionally, we, we get a request, you know, hey, could you guys support, you know, more memory or, or, or more RAM, more storage? And, and absolutely, um, the development that we've done so far, uh, the hardware serves the purpose and it meets the requirements, but 
if somebody comes to us with an application that needs a lot of power, we, you know, that's a good problem to have, and, and we would love to entertain that. Um, so again, ZoomLink uh, IPR, and that stands for Industrial Internet uh, Programmable Radio. So programmability, software development, software hosting, application hosting, it's kind of all the same thing here. Uh, actually, one more thing I want to mention about that is uh, that uh, this is a, an industry first. So FreeWave is leading the way in this direction and that uh, FreeWave doesn't want to be just a, a hardware manufacturer. Uh, we want to have a, a, a device that can do all kinds of things and it's empowered by software. So that's a really big change for the industry. Next, uh, let's talk about the WavePro product. So this is our hardware solution for Wi-Fi applications. Uh, it has a 2.4 and a 5.8 radio inside it. It comes with integrated antennas. Um, it can do mesh networking. Uh, it can do long distance with the right antennas. Uh, it is outdoor mountable. Uh, so that's just a real great uh, product uh, to complement our other ones. And a lot of the times you'll see these proxies in conjunction with each other in that, you know, there could be a site maybe that's four miles from a central office, uh, whether it be for oil and gas or, or water, wastewater. And uh, as part of the backhaul, they may use a ZoomLink radio because it's a far distance and maybe the signal path is difficult, but ZoomLink is able to accomplish that. And then once we're on location there, they may use the WavePro uh, as we'll say kind of a convenience appliance there where you can pull up in a company vehicle, connect to the WavePro via Wi-Fi, and then have access back to the main server uh, via the ZoomLink uh, backhaul there. So there's many different ways in which you can mix our product portfolio to offer that you know, uh, sensor to server connectivity. So there's uh, just some basic uh, specs on the WavePro product. Um, I actually use one of these uh, at, at, at my home, and uh, it's a great product, lots of range, never had any issues with it. Next, we're going to talk about our uh, wireless I.O. products. So again, these are for devices that are not serial or Ethernet, but have digital or analog signaling connected to them. And there's two product categories for I.O. So on the right-hand side, that's our traditional I.O. products, where there's multiple I.O. channels uh, per product. So if you look at the FTR2-IO-IOE, so that has 12 channels of I.O. on the base, but you can purchase expansion modules. Um, so we can accommodate 15 expansion modules there for essentially an unlimited number of I.O. Um, you know, more I.O. than you could ever use at a single location there. And the products on the right-hand side, these are long-range products as well. They're based upon our uh, 900 megahertz radio technology that we've been talking about um, on the other FGR2 product line, like the FGR2-PE. Uh, so those are long-range I.O. solutions, and some of them are expandable. Uh, those need to be mounted in an enclosure, so they are not uh, outdoor ready, but uh, they are expandable and they uh, can transmit a very far range. Moving on to the left-hand side here, this is the Wave Contact uh, platform, and this is our C1D1, meaning this can go in hazardous environments because the hardware uh, is not capable of producing a spark. And this is a more modular approach to I.O in that there is a specific module for each type of I.O. task. And the reason for that is, is this is a battery-powered product. And uh, it's actually one of the freeways, it's the first freeway product that's truly wireless. Uh, so just for a moment, I'll talk about the pressure sensor here, which is one of my favorite products in that line. So that actually is the entire device there. It's the sensor and the radio in one, and it screws right into a standard pressure fitting. Uh, it has a battery included, and uh, it'll wake up at a, set in, in, at a set interval, 
it'll record the pressure data and then it'll send it to uh, the gateway there which is listed just below that. The battery life on that, if you uh, read a, a pressure, let's say every two minutes, the battery life is like 10 plus years uh, on that unit. So tremendous uh, battery life there and that's due to the, the low power design of the hardware and it's due to that we're only doing one task. It's that, that kind of modular approach, but uh, great product, easy to install, uh, easy to program, and uh, very, very long battery life there. And uh, it's also outdoor mountable, so no enclosure is necessary. You don't run power or data cables to it. It just screws right into the pressure fitting there. Um, on the top there, that's a modular I.O. point. So uh, depending on what type of I.O. you're looking to bring in, you'll use a different model number. And we have ones for uh, heart, for analog, uh, for digital, for thermocouple, uh, just depends on the application. And that's also battery powered and outdoor mountable. And then the wireless gateway, uh, that's also outdoor mountable. And that's where those two devices, the 20i and the 30i, are going to report into. Um, so those devices are really the closest to the sensor, or in the case of the pressure sensor, it actually is the sensor itself. Um, so these two product categories, not one is better than the other, it's just a different tool for a different type of job. Um, but on the weight contact side, because it is battery powered, again, you know, life is always a series of trade-offs. Um, it's short range, usually up to a half mile of coverage with that. But uh, for those sensor applications, IO applications, they generally don't require, um, you know, long distance. So it works great for that. And then if you have an application where you need a lot of I.O. and you need it to go really far, that's where you use the traditional I.O. on the right hand side there. All right, we're going to talk uh, just a little bit about a uh, solution here that one of my coworkers came up with. Uh, he was actually supposed to give the uh, presentation today, but um, he ran into a scheduling conflict. So I'm going to cover uh, the system that he's outlined here. So uh, the benefits of this is we want complete remote monitoring and control of uh, Ethernet or IP and serial devices here. So we also have an acronym of freeway that we use, VBDS, uh, Voice, Video, Data, and Sensor. And uh, some of the benefits here, the cost savings. So you know when you can remotely administer something, you don't need to call somebody out to uh, the site there. and uh, you know, we don't need to have specialized knowledge to configure uh, due to the usability of the product there. Uh, so here's a, an overview of the ecosystem. And so there's a couple different locations in that we have uh, an antenna there at uh, 40 feet. We have a solar powered site. We have another solar powered site. And then we have a water tank farm there. So we have a couple different assets that we want to monitor and uh, control and you know make sure that uh, everything's running okay. So here at this one part of the site, this just kind of gives you a view on the ground there. So we're monitoring a water level. We're looking at the current of a pump and we're looking at some different pressures there. And this could be accomplished uh, using either of our IO products there. Uh, since this is short range, right, that so you can see the 40-foot tower on the same piece of property here, uh, you could use weight contact, the, you know, the battery-powered outdoor mountable I.O. devices, or if you had a panel and needed to go further distances, you could use the traditional pre-wave I.O. Uh, so that uh, talks back to uh, the tower here. Uh, on the tower, we have our WP201. Uh, so that's the WayPro, the standards-based product. And uh, that allows uh, Wi-Fi connectivity while you're walking around on site. To look at the statuses of those uh, devices there. Uh, we have a uh, Zoom link uh, also for IP data. And in the panel there, there's a, a switch, the Wave, the Wave Pro uh, power over Ethernet injector, the Zoom link radio, and the cellular router. So many different types of devices in here, each performing a different job. So the cellular router is for remote access to the site. 
uh, the Zoom link radio handles some of the communications on site, so there's other Zoom links there. And then uh, the switch just kind of brings it all together there. At the uh, solar site there, we uh, have some monitoring going on there. So there's the solar controller charger. Uh, that has some I.O. in it that we're bringing into the wave contact. So we can look at the status uh, of that controller, how much voltage it's outputting, and uh, that goes into the WavePro, uh, which is meshed with the other WavePro. And uh, similar in uh, the solar site too here, again, we have uh, an I.O. device that's taking data from uh, a solar controller there and putting it out over our network. And taking it uh, a look from a high level here, and you can see there, there's just there's a different piece of technology uh, for you know whatever the application is on site, which is uh, I/O for the solar charger monitoring, um, also uh, I/O for looking at uh, pressure in the tank, uh, looking at water level, and then we have some Ethernet devices, uh, we have some standards-based equipment with the Wave Pro. So maybe if you want to jump on with your tablet and uh, look into the status of these devices, that works as well. We also have some video. So uh, at the tower there, there's an IP camera, and that's being made available around site through the use of the wave probes. And there's just a still image of uh, what the uh, IP camera looks like. And oh, we're to the end there. OK. Um, so that pretty much uh, wraps it up. Uh, so we covered the. History of FreeWave is a company, who we are, uh, what it is we do. We're traditionally a hardware manufacturer. We have products pretty much for every wireless uh, application, uh, serial, Ethernet, I.O., licensed, unlicensed, short distances, great distances, uh, hazardous environments, uh, all these things. And the future of FreeWave is the ZoomLink product and its capability to be more than just a radio. It really is an IIoT uh, appliance, and that allows us to do a lot of things with data. And in the next coming uh, couple of months, uh, FreeWave will host some other webinars showing you uh, software hosting on uh, the ZoomLink radio. All right, at uh, this time, I'd like to take, turn it over to any questions anybody might have. Um, I don't see any questions. I don't know if anyone wants to submit any now. Give it a couple of seconds. So just as a reminder to everybody, we have recorded the webinar, so I'll send a copy of it out uh, as soon as I can get it uploaded. And uh, if you, sorry, the video, if you would like uh, a copy of the presentation, just uh, reply to my email um, with asking me for it. Um, I still don't see any questions. I think that means it was pretty comprehensive, Greg. Thank you. I don't yep. know if Tom wants to chime in there. Great. OK. Yeah. 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 We have Greg. a lot of products. Yeah. OK, well, I'm, I think that's it. So I'm going to uh, shut down the webinar. So thank you, everybody, for attending. Thank you, Greg and Tony from FreeWave. And, um, if you have any questions about freeway products to follow up, you can always just email me and I will connect you with the right person. Um, Alliance has sales people all over the place, so we should be able to help you no matter where you're based. Thank you for attending and um, look forward to more webinars in the future. Great. Thank you for your time.